Tonight, an FBI special agent has been carjacked at gunpoint in Washington, D.C. Authorities say the agent's car was stolen, along with the body armor and a radio inside. The car was found a short time later. The agent was not hurt. There's no word of an arrest tonight. Ah, yes, life in Washington, D.C. You know, the FBI takes another black guy. I want to see this FBI agent that got carjacked in Washington, D.C. Don't we issue you taxpayer-provided firearms? Aren't you federal law enforcement? Shouldn't you be stopping crimes rather than being victims of crimes? This is getting embarrassing. Gotta tell ya. You guys. The FBI. I think we should just disband the FBI. Then who's gonna spy on all of us? Huh. Maybe this is a conundrum. I should give it a little more thought. Well, happy Thursday to you and welcome. It's the 30th day of November. Isn't that amazing? You know, while the uh, so much, uh, so much to talk about today, the violent mob of uh, you see, they're they're carrying swastikas now, the Democrats in New York City, while they're attacking Israel and uh, supporting Hamas which is a genocidal, radical Islamic terrorist group, and the Democrat Party has saddled up with them. They've joined forces. And it's quite remarkable. And they they attacked, I guess they started at the Fox News Christmas tree, and then they went to Rockefeller Center, not very far away, to attack the Christmas tree lighting because, you know, um, Democrat Party Uberales, I think, is what's going on here. At least one in the mob did have a swastika, They're uh, carrying swastikas now. They're out of the closet. It's kind of tragic. The life of Henry Kissinger bookended by uh, fleeing the Nazis in Germany as a very young man and coming to the United States to, you know, to uh, become a great statesman and and the left. Boy, they hate everybody, don't they? And they certainly hate Henry Kissinger. It is perfectly consistent with the wave of anti-Semitism that the Democrat Party is inflicting upon the United States and the world. But remarkable things just uh, tied up in that bundled package. Uh, and can I say package in this context? And they, so they're attacking the Christmas tree and violence. And I assume there were arrests with all the violence against the police that I saw because Democrats are violent and they're anti Semitic. And they are, even their Jews are anti Semitic. It's kind of amazing. Chuck Schumer, the Lizard King, he went to the, the well of the Senate yesterday to talk about how his fellow travelers, He referenced his fellow travelers. They're shocked that it's not neo-Nazis, which I'm not sure if they exist, but if they do, they're they're with the Democrat Party and they were protesting the Christmas tree lighting at Rockefeller Center last night. Extraordinary stuff. But Schumer on the floor of the Senate talking about it, and he he did use the term fellow travelers. He said, uh, my friends and I, we were shocked to learn that they weren't Klan or neo-Nazi. No, there there are fellow travelers. Now, fellow travelers is a term used by the communists in Soviet Russia. That's where the term comes from, and it refers to commies. And Schumer is out of the closet now. I got to tell you, the Democrat Party is really, they're showing up and burning stuff down, aren't they? Amazing stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, Also, you know, the Democrats with the violent, I want to share some of that with you coming up, the audio and so on of the violent mob at the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree lighting. It was madness. And it's the Democrat Party, and it's anti-Semitism. And, and I'm sorry that Henry Kissinger uh, saw that in his last days in the United States of America from his home in Connecticut, watching it on television, reading about it in the papers. Uh, you know, at least it was the Democrat Party. It, it, uh, that probably provided him some small measure of comfort in the context of the sweep of history. Uh, extraordinary things that we're seeing here in the United States. And... Henry Kissinger died at the age of 100, and the left hates him. They hate him because they're anti-Semites and they're anti-Republican, and if you're pro-American, and uh, then they're anti-you. It's extraordinary stuff. Uh, the headlines are pretty amazing. Henry Kissinger, comma, war criminal, beloved by America's ruling class. Look, they got uh, the uh, class warfare in there. Uh, and finally dies. That's the That's the headline. They couldn't be more filled with hate if they were gargling in the blood of, of uh, Adolf Eichmann. Could they gargle in the blood of Adolf Eichmann? Well, why not? Why the hell not? 
And Henry Kissinger remembered as influential statesman, comma, war criminal. That's the NBC News headline there. And uh, also some things that ought to be talked about a little bit. Playboy of the West Wing. Celebrities Henry Kissinger dated. He dated a lot of Hollywood celebrities and music. And he's, uh, you know, he, he's the guy who coined the phrase, uh, power is the ultimate aphro- aphrodisiac. And uh, he dated lots and lots of people who's women. You know, it was, it was the old days and he's not a Democrat. So all women, uh, pretty amazing stuff. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And uh, the Washington Post, they, they hate everybody. Rolling Stone, they hate everybody. NBC News, they hate everybody because they're all run by leftists and leftists kill, hate, destroy. That's their program. That should be their bumper sticker, shouldn't it? Kill, hate, destroy. They're, and they've joined forces with Hamas. Extraordinary. Yeah, Washington Post, breaking news. Henry Kissinger dies at 100. The diplomat exercised an unparalleled control over U.S. international affairs and policymaking. He was also the target of relentless critics, like at the Washington Post, who deemed him unprincipled and amoral. Yeah, unlike the people at the Washington Post who are principled and moral. Isn't that amazing? Extraordinary stuff. So I want to get into uh, the, the Henry Kissinger story a bit. There's a lot to say about Henry Kissinger, an amazing life, a century of life and an extraordinary run and extraordinary. He got us out of the war in Vietnam, so they call him a warmonger. The war that the Democrat Party got us into because they're filthy, warmongering savages. You know, he got the Nobel Peace Prize, Henry Kissinger did. Barack Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize too. Then he went on to bomb more countries than any president since World War II. World War II, uh, when Henry Kissinger and his family escaped the Socialist Workers Party of Adolf Hitler and came to the United States. But uh, let's not get all caught up in the facts of history and the 20th century and all that amazing stuff. So, uh, And in the meantime, the Voice of America, run by left-wingers and the government, the permanent bureaucracy, the, the deep state, you might say. Voice of America removes the word terrorist from story on Hamas music festival attack. You wouldn't want to use any harsh language when you're talking about the savage, blood-sopped murderers of Hamas slithering out of cracks in the earth, earth to slaughter children. Also, you see the, the 10-month-old baby they kidnapped. They've announced they, it, they killed or is dead, you know. But, you know, I was playing you the other day. They weren't feeding uh, the hostages little children that they stuffed in attics, and I've got an update on that, too. Because the savages, maybe they shouldn't use ter- terrorists, they should use savages at Voice of America instead. Might be more accurate. Amazing. And now GOP senators, but not Democrat senators, demand firings over Voice of America's policy against labeling Hamas members terrorists. That's the National Review. They're a lot more accurate when it comes to this story. Amazing stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, so we got that going. And... Um, let me see, you know, my best girl and I were talking and she had a, a funny one. The the Democrat Party is running around smashing things and attacking people and accusing and indicting and carrying swastikas and uh, saying that Israel is a colonial state that was colonized in 1948. And that's a little ironic, given that next month we're going to be celebrating the, bir- the birth of a Jew in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago, which is in Israel for Democrats listening along. You know, hey, Jesus was Jewish, and uh, he was from Israel, and uh, you still want to say they colonized in 1948, you maroons? What a maroon. Honestly, extraordinary stuff. In the meantime, 73% of Jewish students in the United States of America have witnessed or been the direct victims of anti-Semitic attacks on campuses in the United States, run by Democrats that self-describe as liberals because they use the words, but they don't know what they mean. How many times do I have to say it? And uh, the Telegraph out of the UK, 10-month-old baby hostage is dead. First of all, let's pause for a second. They took a 10-month-old baby hostage. Savages better than terrorists, I think. Hamas claims, as Netanyahu vows vows to fight to the end, Amazing stuff. And these uh, remarkable stories about a uh, UN, United Nations representative in the Gaza, 
who uh, held a child hostage in the attic of his house for the entire time and didn't feed the hostage. The little boy didn't feed him because blood-drenched savages from a medieval hell. But uh, never mind that. Crazy stuff, yeah. United Nations relief worker, worker, who's a teacher, held uh, an Israeli hostage in the attic for about 50 days. Never mind that. And a bunch of United Nations people celebrated the massacre on October 7th, too, because C point A, savages. Amazing stuff. Uh, In the meantime, Qatar, you know, Johnny Qatar. Qatar was planning a celebration, a celebration of their nation in Washington, D.C., but they've canceled it on account of they want to kill more Jews. So that's the thing. But so do the Democrats in New York and and in Washington and beyond. It's pretty amazing. Rockefeller Center Christmas tree lit despite arrests during pro-Palestinian, that's to say pro-Hamas terrorist, protests to disrupt holiday celebration. And they're all Democrats, every filthy one of them. Just extraordinary stuff. Pro-Palestinian protesters, pro-Hamas, one carrying swastika, swarm midtown, they're all Democrats, in bid to derail Rockefeller Center Christmas tree lighting. That's your Democrat party. Also, I've got to tell you, today is today is our once a year, here on the Chris Plant Show, once a year, we uh, pitch in and we we ask you to help us raise money for the wonderful people at Fisher House, the great Fisher House. We've been doing this for more than 15 years. I should know how many years. More than 15 years. And, uh, and I'd, I'd like to invite you to, um, to contribute to Fisher House. In fact, I'm going to give you a different phone number today to contribute to Fisher House because we love Fisher House. And once a year we do this. 888 is the number to contribute money to Fisher House, 888-294-8560, 294-8560, and the 888. You can do it online at WMAL.com, my mothership station as well. To contribute money to Fisher House, uh, our listeners always do a spectacular job every year. That number is 888. That's you. That's you, you know. 294-8560. And back with more party madness after this. And and a visit from, from a wonderful representative who can tell us what Fisher House does so that we can smash all previous records raising money for Fisher House today, one day a year. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. I mentioned that uh, today, today and tomorrow, in fact, we uh, once a year we take a little time to help raise some money for the wonderful, the great organization, Fisher House. Been doing it since uh, I started radio. In uh, 2005, right? And um, and to that end, on the line, we have a great American, a uh, now retired Air Force Staff Sergeant, Matt Cable. And uh, Matthew, thank you for being with us today. I appreciate your being here. And thank you, sir. Yeah, you bet. And Matt, I, I understand that uh, you have um, unfortunately had, but beaten. Fortunately, cancer twice, and uh, you're you're a super athlete. Looked you up online. You look like Superman, a superhero. Participate in the Warrior Games and the Invictus Games, and and uh, eleven years in the Air Force, Staff Sergeant, and uh, the Fisher House played an important role in your life when you're going through that. Yes. Oh, they did. Yes, they did. Absolutely. Tell me all about it. Yeah. So <clears throat> the Fisher House actually uh, housed my parents when I got medevac back home from uh, this, um, where I was deployed. Um, and I was at Walter Reed for about 40 plus days um, while I was going through chemotherapy and getting back in remission. And, and without them, you know, my parents wouldn't have been able to be there for, for me. Um, and it would have been extremely, extremely hard. Uh, so what they do, you know, for, for these warriors, you know, they're, they, they bring in their family, they house them. And, 
it's it's incredible. It's an incredible support um, network, and um, yeah, we <laughs> I can't even you know we're extremely blessed to have them. Um, when I made the Invictus Games team um, last year, uh, the Fish House actually sent all of us wounded and ill who were re representing uh, Team USA in the Hague Netherlands, uh, including two of our friends and family to attend as well um, to support their warrior. So I mean. <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, one incredible uh, foundation, that's for sure. They are. It's a great family. The Fisher family is extraordinary. And Ken Fisher, the, the big boss, they're amazing, and, and the whole family. But, you know, we Matt, we tend to think of Fisher House as uh, helping out uh, the families of, of uh, our men and women wounded in combat and going through uh, uh, the difficulties associated with that, which can be very prolonged. But you're a great example of, you know, you're you're one of our our heroes, one of our Air Force uh, people, a senior enlisted man. You get cancer, and you're uh, battling that out of the blue, young guy, uh, Superman, and uh, like holy smoke, it comes out of nowhere. And still, you know, Fisher House is there for you and and f for your family. Yes, they absolutely were, man. <laughs> and I appreciate that. <laughs> Do what I can, I, yeah. Um, I, I've had leukemia twice, and so, you know, um, but knowing that they're by my side, you know, it's incredible help as well. Well, I got to tell you, um, they are an extraordinary organization, as I said, and we've been, and I've been to a number of uh, Fisher houses over the years, and particularly at Christmas time, it's extraordinary. Uh, Fisher houses dress up and, and with trees and decorations and reindeer and, and uh, the meals and the, you know, the smell of, pies cooking in the oven and just extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary places. Absolutely. And the individuals that, that work for and volunteer for Fisher House, also just the, the best people in the world uh, doing they something are. extraordinary. Always. Now, where were you yes. uh, when you were battling, I guess, two different, two different episodes with leukemia? Uh, so <clears throat> the first, uh, my first bout of leukemia, I was actually in Great Falls, Montana. Um, fast forward about five years, I then deployed overseas, and then that's when I relapsed. And uh, yeah, that's that's you know, that's kind of when we ran into uh, <clears throat> I got out of Walter Reed, and the Fisher House organization was able to you know help me and my family. Um, my you know my parents will talk about about them and you know how thankful they are for them. Yeah. Um, and it's just yeah, it's incredible, you know, yeah. and it's it's and it's like. Every year, you know, you see it. You know, you see it because they're helping um, warriors every like every. Like for for instance, for Invictus Games, for Warrior Games, they are there for us. Um, they are flying us there. They're housing us. Um, they're making sure we're freaking we're taken care of. So I mean, incredible organization. The fish are. <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. Matt Cable, God bless you. Saluting you, sir. Thank you so much. And the number to. To give until it hurts for Fisher House. I keep waiting for a listener to give $1 million. 888 294 8560. Well, we got, uh, we got the ball rolling on uh, Fisher House. And uh, Matt Cable. Matt Cable calling in. Wonderful. And I want to share with you that uh, Donald from Cary, North Carolina, Donald from Cary, North Carolina, says he listens every day, sent a check for $5,000, 5000 American dollars, because of, you know, Fisher House's affiliation with uh, our humble radio show, The Chris Plant Show. And uh, very, very nice. Donald from Cary, North Carolina, thank you, $5,000. Now, look, send $20. Uh, send, send $10 if, if you can. Uh, and uh, I ask every year, if somebody out there is worth a billion dollars, send a million dollars to Fisher House during this uh, fundraising. And I, I've said in the past, I'll come over and cut your lawn. I'll come over. <laughs> I'll cut your lawn. All right, let's, uh, and with that, let's go to the telephones, Michael. Let's go to Tony. Calling from Bethesda, Maryland. Tony, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Great, Tony. What do you know? Chris, it's an honor. For the third year in a row, I'm the first telephone guest to call in 
to pledge support for Fisher House. Uh, our company uh, has a very fond relationship. We are a service disabled veteran owned small business and we run multiple fundraisers throughout the year in support of Fisher House, but right. our large gift is through the Chris Plant Show every wow. year. Cut it out. That's how uh, great are you. Say again? I'm sorry. We're, we're pleased to pledge another $2,000 this year, and we really appreciate the support that you provide to uh, the veterans each and every day. Uh, I smile each time you tell one of your veteran callers that you're saluting them. <laughs> and I always am, obviously. <laughs> uh, that is great. Well, Chris, there's something I want to there's something I want to mention about you. It was a conversation I had with a couple of colleagues several weeks ago, the week before Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Some of us go back to uh, the early days of your program, pre debacle with Scarborough and Return. <laughs> and I remember it well. We, we, yeah, well, we, we, we talk about the fact that being a part of it from the beginning, you know, listening and discovering Chris Plant from the beginning. Um, before you went national with Cumulus, we kind of feel like we're, we're Liverpudlians going to the Cavern Club to see John and Paul and Stuart and Pete play at lunchtime, uh, <laughs> watching this great talent turn into a nationwide phenomenon. Nothing more humorous than to hear one of your competitors try to be Chris Plant on the radio. Uh, <laughs> I take great delight in that. I uh, I hear that there's a certain amount of that going on on other radio shows, um, but uh, far be it from me to to call anyone out. I uh, it's a form of flattery, I'm told, right? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is humorous, but it's a humorous in a completely different way than than Chris Plant is humorous. I have a beautiful cotton shirt which has a coffee stand on the sleeve because. You did a Hillary joke while I was mid mouth with a cup of coffee, and I did a <laughs> That is great. That's uh, uh, I, I, it, it, it. Should be annoying, but I wear that stain with pride. Chris, thank <laughs> you so much for all you do, and please, other companies, especially you service disabled, veteran owned small businesses, uh, please pour your heart out and donate to the Fisher House through the Chris Plant Show. Tony, uh, God bless you. Thank you very much. Um, it is a truly great organization doing great, great work, filling the gap where, you know, where the military does the health care. And, and uh, you know, there are families involved. There are young wives, young husbands, children. There are parents, as, uh, as our friend was just saying. And to take care of the families during these very trying times, very often combat injuries. We just had a a V-22 Osprey go down in the Pacific Ocean to the south of Japan uh, day before yesterday, night before last. And uh, initially there were six Americans on board. Now I believe the number is eight. And, and um, you know, our men and women are out there serving and sacrificing and, and dying uh, on a regular basis um, on the pointy end of the spear defending our country. And, and at this point in human history, defending defending liberty, human liberty itself. And without the U.S. military being out there, uh, it's a well-established fact that the totalitarians would be taking over. They, they may be taking over the world as it is with communist China on the march planning on dominating the 21st century in the way that the United States, thankfully for humankind, dominated the 20th century. The communists, totalitarians, uh, brutal murderers. The Chinese communist regime has murdered more human beings than any regime in the history of the world. And they're looking to take over the planet Earth in the 21st century. Joe Biden and the Democrats are not up to the job of preventing that from happening. And the, they don't seem to be interested in the job of preventing that from happening. Putin is on the march in Europe. The Islamists are on the march in the Middle East. And of course, the Democrat Party has joined the Islamists and they pander to the communist Chinese. They quake in fear of Putin. And of course, the Chinese have funneled millions of dollars into the Biden family coffers. So we're in a very peculiar place right now, aren't we, Tony? Ever much so. There's no, no question about it. But you know, there's no evidence, Chris. There's just no evidence. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, without evidence. Yeah, they love the without evidence thing. So, uh, Tony, uh, $2,000 from, from you and from your company, and you're calling on other business owners to, to chip in as you can, and, uh, and I'm thankful for that. Um, you want to mention the name of your business? I'd love to. My, my business partner, Greg Gomez, down in Virginia Beach, is a service-disabled veteran, and our company is D9 Tech Resources, and we support the Department of Defense um, uh, from coast to coast and even internationally. Outstanding. Outstanding. And you're a veteran so, yourself? I am not. I am not. I, I never served. I did deploy with the 10th Mountain Division during the Clinton administration as an employee of a defense contractor. But um, uh, our, our priority, my priority, the reason I'm still working is to try to find, uh, try to grow a business and find work for veterans. We love hiring veterans uh, into the company. Uh, we are blessed. We want to share those blessings. And Chris, uh, I didn't serve. I don't think you did. It wouldn't be appropriate for veterans to salute you. But every veteran that I know that knows Chris Plant and the Chris Plant Show honors you and what you do for them. Well, God bless you, Tony. Thank you uh, very, very much for the very kind words and for the $2,000 uh, to the Fisher House and calling on other business owners to to uh, do the same. And uh, very, very good. Tony, uh, Bethesda, Maryland, thanks so much. I look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, thank you for calling in today. Great talking to you. And thank you for the generous contribution to uh, to the Fisher House. Such a great organization. I'm very thankful. Um and so thanks, Tony. And, and we are also, as we always are, at 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625 is the, is the telephone number uh, here to, to dial in and join the program. We, uh, you know, we uh, take calls. I had a, a, a listener complained recently that I was taking too many calls, taking too many calls. And I don't really see it that way because, as a rule, because... You know, this is the most open and democratic form of media on the planet, talk radio. And it's one of the really great things. One of the things I love about doing talk radio is, uh, you know, Wolf Blitzer doesn't take calls from viewers to say, hey, Wolf, uh, you just got that whole thing completely wrong. Because, you know, it'd be really tough if they started taking calls. They'd have to defend what they do. And that could be, be very problematic for them, couldn't it? Yes, it could. Uh, and with that, I've got so many things to to get to, and one of them is a uh, a poll. I was I was texting with uh, with a pal of mine, uh, pal old pal of mine, Man Cow, Man Cow in Chicago, the uh, great radio legend, Man Cow. He's a riot. He's so much fun, uh, and he shared uh, a uh, a poll and a graphic with me a couple minutes. I want to share with you about the left in the United States of America and their their. I guess suddenly being virulently anti-Semitic and pro-radical Islamic jihadi and uh, carrying swastika, at least one guy in New York last night, at the Christmas tree lighting because, you know, to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, a Jew born in Israel, uh, if I remember correctly, more than 2,000 years ago. And the Democrats say, oh, no, it's colonialism. Also, in the, they had these signs yesterday in New York that had to end Israel because of colonialism, and the U.S. too. Make no mistake, they're coming for us just like the jihadis, the left, communist China, and the jihad. And, now we can add to that list, the Democratic Party in the United States of America. And with that, let's go, to the, let's go back to the telephones. Let's go to Charlie calling from Sorrento, Florida. Charlie, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Mr. Chris, yes, I sir. love your show. I'm a disabled veteran as well. Uh, the reason why I called is I was doing a little bit of research um, on Mao Zedong. Sure. And without uh, without his Red Army, the Communist Party was never going to last. And um, I wonder if the, the youths of uh, today are the Mao's new Red China that the Democrats are using <clears throat> to basically cause mayhem. And without them, you know, the 2020 election may never have been won. Uh, with all the riots that are happening around the country, and still now. And um, I'm just wondering what you thought about that. Well, uh, look, I think that our schools, uh, first the universities and the high schools, now the teachers' unions, the grammar schools, have become brainwashing and indoctrination factories for the left. 
And it's quite amazing. They, they uh, came in with uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street anti-capitalist. This is the left springing from college campuses. We had the Francis Fox Piven out there getting them to chant in unison, uh, you know, about destroying capitalism itself. You have the Chinese communists funneling money to the Joe Biden household and uh, to Hunter Biden buying influence in the what is now the first family of the United States of America. The Chinese have vowed to be the dominant force on the planet Earth in the 21st century, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. But are the youths of today in the United States of America the Red Army of the left? It's certainly looking like that. I mean, look, they started out with this Occupy Wall Street anti-capitalist. Then they suddenly they, they wanted to prove the kind of power they had, the kind of sway they had over the youths in the United States. And they uh, sowed gender confusion that is just anti-science, anti-logic, anti-everything in history. But they're able to pull it off and prove it very publicly. We'll confuse your son. We'll confuse your daughter down to being eight years old and we'll start engaging in genital mutilation. Uh, the left has a real grip and it is, you know, make no mistake, Charlie, it's the Democrat Party that we're talking about here in the United States of America. That is the left. And and the uh, see, there was another attack on the Capitol today, somebody attacking in a car reminiscent of the suicide attack on the Capitol a couple of years ago by a radical black militant who murdered one U.S. Capitol police officer and severely wounded another. Another attack on the Capitol today, the anti-police movement, the riot movement, they, they've they marshaled their violent forces and segregated them out. They're also segregating racially, segregating schools in the United States. I talked about that the other day in Evanston, Illinois. And amazing stuff. And would they, would they have lost the 2020 election were it not for all the street violence and everything else? A perfectly good question that nobody's asking in the phony baloney news media. But are the kids the new Red Army within our own borders? It sure smells like it, doesn't it, Charlie? It certainly yes, does. Yeah. And uh, God bless you, disabled veteran. I'm saluting you. And uh, yeah, Mao's Red Army. The uh, Yeah, the left has infected everything from Bud Light to NFL football to uh, you name it. They've infected everything with their insane brand of politics. It's everywhere. And they're not liberals. They're the left. I keep saying this because it's true. Uh, Charlie, thank you for the thank you for the great call. And uh, God bless you. Thank you for serving our nation and for paying attention to what's going on. And we have returned. We are uh, today and tomorrow. Our humble radio broadcast, The Chris Plant Show. Nationwide, raising money for Fisher House, the wonderful, great Fisher House, provides support to military families or combat wounded and for uh, members of our military that, uh, that are dealing with medical crises and, and uh, backstopping the families and, and our troops by providing extraordinary support and uh, asking you. Now, we've, we've had some great contributions already. Donald from Cary, North Carolina with 5,000 American dollars and, and Tony from Bethesda with $2,000. And uh, on the line now, we have Christy Wilcox. And Christy Wilcox is, uh, actually works for the Fisher House now, but also had occasion, um, unfortunately, or, you know, fortunately, to, to stay at the Pittsburgh Fisher House. Well, well, Christy, while your father was receiving treatment, and uh, Christy, thank you for being here. And tell me all about it. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity to share. Yeah, I'm on the uh, Fisher House communications team, and I tell people I have one of the best jobs because I get to spend time talking to guests and sharing the Fisher House stories. And it's amazing to listen to military families share their journey of triumph, recovery, togetherness. And one thing I've learned through my own story and hearing other stories is that a family's love is truly the best medicine. I, I can't say that enough. Um, when my dad got sick in 2015, I was uh, so worried about getting to be able to be with him and spend time with him. I was living in Arizona at the time when he got diagnosed with kidney and colon cancer. Mm. And I remember feeling so guilty. Uh, I think 
probably many people uh, go through that process of like, how do I be with my loved one? How do I be there to support them? And um, my stepmom was the one that told me there's this place that we could stay near the Pittsburgh VA hospital. And there was so much relief at that point. Um, And I can remember sitting next to my dad at the hospital and just being so thankful to be beside him because we didn't know how things, you know, were going to turn out at the time. Um, The Pittsburgh Fisher House was just a short walk to the hospital, and so it made it really easy for us. Yeah, as it uh, normally is with Fisher Houses and Fisher Houses that I've visited, uh, if they got them on the grounds of the VA hospital, then they do. And and otherwise, as as close in proximity as they can, and if you need help getting back and forth, then then they make arrangements uh, for that too. And again, um, you know, uh, December is uh, moments away, and that means Christmas time, and we've got military people that are dealing like your family, uh, Christy, with with medical issues, and and also you know lots and lots of veterans that are that are still dealing with uh, combat injuries and. And also, you have non-combat injuries. And, you know, again, I mentioned a V-22 Osprey went down in the ocean just south of Japan a couple of days ago. And it looks like there are no survivors, but our military people are taking risks and and being injured all over the place. We, um, you know, it doesn't make a lot of news, but uh, if it's your family, you know all about it. So, Christy, tell me tell me about your uh, your father and your father's your father's service. Well, he was drafted, um, so it's he does not talk a lot about his service. Uh, uh, he's one of those, I call him a grumpy old <laughs> service man, even yeah. though he, he's an amazing father. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I'm very, very thankful that, to have him, you know, still here with us. I mean, the best part of my story is I have a three-year-old son who loves his grandfather, And I get to see them have fun together. And I truly believe that if it hadn't been for the support my father received um, and having his family there with him, um, my story may have turned out much different. And I'm just so grateful for the Fisher House and the opportunity to serve other military families. Um, Just to kind of reflect on what you were saying, I remember this family that was staying at the Fisher House at the same time as us. Their son was in the hospital, and I want to say he was in his early 20s. And it made such a huge impact on me because this, I I just remember him going through these huge challenges um, and talking to his family and thinking, you know, I wonder how they're going to get through this. But I I just remember that that he had his family there and he was able to come over to the Fisher house and get a little time away from the hospital and spend time with his family. And, and, you know, there are stories like that over and over and over that. Yeah, that's a fact. Christy. Uh, you're wonderful. God bless you. Thank you very much. 888 294 8560.